Greetings. Salam. This is Mohsen Banan. I am an Iranian software and internet engineer. I converted to Emacs in 1986. It was Emacs version 17 then. By around 1988, when Emacs version 18 was well in place, I started living inside of Emacs. My primary digital environment has been Emacs ever since. It has been a good life. I'm a native Farsi speaker and writer. I'm not a linguist and I do not specialize in multilingualization, internationalization, and localization. My favorite programming language is Lisp and I am a bit of an Emacs developer. This presentation is about use of Perso-Arabic scripts with Emacs. It's an overview presentation. I won't be digging deep in many of the mentioned topics. My goal is to make you aware of what can be done with Emacs today and the potentials that Emacs presents for Perso-Arabic writers. The main topics that I'll cover are a brief introduction to Perso-Arabic scripts, two existing Emacs Persian input methods, the challenges involved with making Emacs applications bidirectional aware, the ultimate goal of creating a complete digital environment for Perso-Arabic writers, and I'll also be including various pointers. So, first, let's make sure that what I'm presenting is of interest to you. If you are a Perso-Arabic writer, and if you use Emacs, you're definitely my intended audience. If you're an Emacs developer who wishes to make her Emacs apps multilingual and BD aware, you're also my intended audience. For the purposes of this presentation in this slide, I'm categorizing scripts based on directionality and shaping. Latin letters are not shaped. Generally speaking, the shape of a Latin letter is independent of its position in a word. Perso-Arabic letters are subject to shaping. For example, the letter Mim, sounding similar to M, takes three shapes depending on whether it is in the beginning of a word, in the middle of a word, or at the end of a word. I'll be showing more of how shaping works in an Emacs session screencast later. Shaping has ramifications for Emacs application developers. For example, if you're combining initial letters to create a label, those letters can be shaped together, which is not what you want. In such cases, you would need to explicitly keep them separate. Latin-based scripts are always left to right. Perso-Arabic scripts are right to left with letters, but numbers are left to right. So Perso-Arabic scripts are bidirectional, BD. Hebrew is also bidirectional, but Hebrew is not shaped. More recently, it has become very common to mix Perso-Arabic and Latin text. This can become very confusing if paragraph directionality is not properly observed. I'll be providing some examples as screencasts. The Emacs Display Engine now fully and well supports both shaping and BD. Since 2012, starting with Emacs version 24, we can say that Emacs is a truly multilingual capable environment. Like everything else, multilingual support for Emacs was added gradually. Unicode support was added early on. The framework for input methods evolved in the 1990s, but it was not till version 24 in 2012 
that the display engine could fully support BD. Hats off to Eli Zaretsky for his work on Emacs BD. Once full BD support was in place in 2012, I went ahead and added two Persian input methods to Emacs 24. So now Emacs fully supports Perso-Arabic scripts. By Perso-Arabic script, we're referring to the Arabic writing system with various extensions used by a large number of languages. Perso-Arabic is the second most widely used writing system in the world by the number of countries. It is the third by the number of users after the Latin and Chinese scripts. So by way of supporting Perso-Arabic, Emacs's potential user base can be greatly enhanced. Before focusing on the Persian input methods, let me quickly summarize Emacs's input methods model. Input methods allow you to enter characters that are not supported by your keyboard. With Quail maps, we can map ASCII key strings to multilingual characters. So we can input any text from an ASCII keyboard. You select an input method with Control X, Enter, Control Backslash. We'll try that in a screencast shortly. Since version 24, Emacs comes loaded with two Persian input methods. Farsi Isiri 9147 is the standard traditional Iranian keyboard. Farsi Transliterate Banon is an intuitive transliteration keyboard for Farsi, which requires near zero training for use. I'll be mostly focused on Farsi Transliterate Bannon in this presentation. So let's try these out. In this GIF cast, we're going to select a Persian input method and write a few simple sentences. With no training and no documentation, any Farsi writer familiar with Emacs can write these as Farsi Transliterate Bannon input method is intuitive. I'll be using KeyCast to show you keys as they are used. Let me first describe as to what we have on the screen. There are three windows in one frame. KeyCast will show commands and keys on the mode line. The leftmost window is showing logs of KeyCast. Transformed individual unshaped letters will, will appear here. The middle window is running a tail minus F on the dribble file piped to fold minus W1. This lets you see the raw ASCII characters as I type them. The right window is the empty buffer on ex.fa file. Anything that I describe here can be done with Virgin Emacs distribution with nothing added. But I'm using Bli by Star Liber Halal Emacs environment to show things. You don't need to have Bli for uh, writing the equivalent of the text in this GIF cast. First, I'm going to select the Farsi transliterate Bannon. I'm entering control X, enter control backslash. Notice the mode line and the prompt at mini buffer. With completion, I'm going to select Farsi transliterate Bannon. Notice that Farsi ECD 9147 was also provided as a choice. Also, notice that the letter B appears in the left of the mode line of ex.fa. This indicates which input method has been selected. Also notice that cursor is on the top left corner of ex.fa. 
Next, I'm going to enter the S character. Notice the cursor moved to the right and unshaped sin appeared in the ex.fa buffer and on the mode line and in the keycast log buffer. Next, I'm going to enter L. Notice LOM in the mode line and notice how sin was subjected to shaping Next, I'm going to write the letter to write the following. Salam, hal shoma chetore? Boy, Max, hame kar mishe kard. Hello, how are you? You can do everything with Emacs. Generally, same sounding Latin characters are used. As usual, vowels are ignored unless called for. Notice that in order to get Hey Jimmy, I repeated H twice. Shin is the obvious SH. Che is the obvious CH. Te das de dar is uppercase T. Te donorte is lowercase T. That's it. We managed to write in Farsi with a QWERTY keyboard intuitively. Next, we are going to switch back to Globish and write back to Globish. Notice that the Globish sentence started from the left side. This is due to proper detection of paragraph directionality by Emacs. For the most part, Emacs is self-documenting. Here, we are pointing you to some relevant self-contained Emacs resources. The BD documentation applies to all BD scripts, not just Perso-Arabic scripts. Referring to the code can also be useful for some. Here are some pointers to the Quail translation code for Persian input methods. The persian.el file has full details of the mapping and some documentation. Next, we'll show the keyboard layouts as a GIF cast. You can get relevant documentation for any input method with the describe input method command. So let's try that for Farsi transliterate banon. We are back in the ex.fa buffer as one window. We don't need the keycast logging and the dribble windows anymore. With the control backslash, I reactivate the Farsi input method. Notice that keycast is still active on the mode line. Next, with the control H, control backslash, I get the input methods documentation. I then delete other windows and keep the help buffer visible. Notice that B in this input methods identifier. Here is the URL for full documentation on the web. The keyboard layout itself is a one-to-one -one mapping but towards making transliteration intuitive, multiple keys are sometimes mapped to the same letter. For example, both I and Y produce Y. The usual two-letter transliterations ending with H, J, Ch, Sh, and Ch, are provided. The ampersand prefix is used to support often invisible BD markings. In addition to this internal documentation, full documentation is also available. Complete documentation for Persian input methods is available as PLPC 120.036. Next, we'll take a quick look at this on the web. 
You can click on links in the reveal web-based form of this presentation. So let's visit PLPC 12036. This document fully describes Persian input methods. In addition to HTML, you can also obtain it in PDF. Let's do that. Of particular interest in this document are various tables that enumerate lists of letters with their association to both Persian input methods. Let's take a look at a few of these. Table 3, mapping of ECD 6219, the Farsi character set, to Emacs Persian input methods could be of interest to you. As well as Table 8, for BD related control markups and table 9 for vowels and other signs. Having covered input methods, let's turn our attention to ramifications of BD and Perso Arabic on various Emacs applications. Since 2012, I have been using Persian text in various Emacs applications. In short, my experience has been that most Emacs apps are usable, but they all have glitches that could at a minimum annoy Perso-Arabic users. In this slide, I'm presenting a summary. The glitches with GNUs are not all that significant for me. BBDB glitches can easily be fixed. For calendar, I have customized my own setup to support Persian and Islamic dates in Perso-Arabic. Perhaps they should be merged upstream. Instead of dealing with apps one at a time, I think it's more reasonable to consider them collectively. The glitches that I mentioned in the previous slide have two roots. Some are BD specific and some are Perso-Arabic specific. In this slide, I have classified them as such and have made some general suggestions. But all of these at best amount to tactical approaches. I think a more strategic approach is called for. The right way to address BD awareness and other awarenesses is to build them in frameworks that Emacs apps can then use. So I'm proposing that we first create ENML, the Emacs native markup language, as a lispish, perhaps even not fully secure, superset of HTML5. With that in place, we can then build on the two decades of experience that have produced various web application development frameworks by mimicking one of them. I don't have any running code for any of these, but discussing strategy need not always be futile. Emacs has immense potentials, but those potentials cannot be realized unless we integrate Emacs in the totality of a specific complete digital ecosystem. Over the past two decades, I've been building the contours of the Liber Halal by Star digital ecosystem. Emacs can then be fully integrated into by Star. It's through such integration that full conviviality of Emacs can be experienced. Bli, the by Star Liber Halal Emacs environment, is Emacs plus a whole lot of Emacs apps integrated with Debian, with by Star services, and with BISOS, the by Star Internet Services OS. Perhaps this could be the topic of a presentation for the 2022 Emacs conference.